of the Pacific Plate and the Pacific Basin associated plates. That, that is that correct? Yeah. And then, with with volcanoes and with these plumes, are those models? Do they also become predictive in nature, or are volcanoes sort of so unpredictable that it becomes difficult to know? what shifts we might expect to say over the next like 10 or 20 or 30 million years um yeah it's 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 kind of limited what we can do to predict with this um uh, like I, I wouldn't be able to predict like a change in plate motion or anything from this kind of modeling yeah so mostly at the moment we're still we're still in the phase of uh, our understanding of uh plate tectonics where we kind of look into the past and understand the current settings mm -hmm. uh, some people have tried to uh, uh, project things forward um, and you know there, there's there's still some uh, 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 you know there's still some things that are on the table out for debate. Yeah, AKA sure. We don't know. Yeah. Well, difficulties, <laughs> uh, right? And even being sure that we have the the model right, otherwise its predictive yeah, I mean, power is not going to be very good. Very yeah, high. these models are still being updated and revised because it's it's really hard to do this kind of work, and there what are a lot of patches. Thing here. Can we get a that's that's what I was looking at too. I was about to get yeah. closer to. If it is a sea cucumber, it would be a different one than we've seen. That sponge okay. is also very intriguing as well. So. It is. Mm -hmm. uh, I yeah. apologize for the random question, but it was coming no, into my mind. Random. Like you know how we watch the images of all of the the land masses sort of going from Pangaea forward, like all taking different shapes and moving around. Yeah, people have Earth. tried some forward modeling too, and uh, mm -hmm. that's that's complex to do because there are just so many variables involved. Sure, sure. But uh, yeah, there there's there's a. Uh, one model that I'm aware of, it's, it's been around for a while, and I don't know if it's been updated. Uh, that, that suggests that maybe it's, uh, maybe the uh, Atlantic Ocean, for Can example, might be yeah, starting to uh, develop subduction zones, and it may actually eventually close someday in the way distant future and oh, uh, wow. form what's called it, uh, the Neo-Pangaea supercontinent. No way. So that's, that's Europe one possible and North America thing. coming back together and, and yeah. the Americas and Africa, what? Yeah. Um, oh my goodness. So that, that's one possible scenario. And there, there are, uh, I think, a couple others, but I'm not as familiar with them. And would that mean, this is just me kind of geeking out and if these questions don't even make sense, because I mm -hmm. don't know enough to even know if the questions are good. No, but uh, would that mean that the, the Pacific would then fundamentally sort of have to expand even wider than it already is if that if the Atlantic is starts pulling back together again? It would seem so, yeah. Oh. Fantastic. This looks like a cell The future is Pacific. You want to look oh, at that? Yeah, that sponge would be awesome. Okay. Like For those of you who plan on living uh, 50 million years or longer, then uh, yeah. this is relevant what? for you. <laughs> you left <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I didn't hear you, Zach. No, you're fine. That's my fault. It looks like we've got some unbranched bamboos and unbram unbranched primnoids here as well. Um, and the sponge is a very interesting shape. Yeah. All right. We'd be talking about like the Neopanthalassan ocean or something if we went back into a supercontinent cycle. But you know, it's it's not very clear what exactly could happen because that you know, all models are intrinsically wrong to some degree or another. That's right. uh, you know, there's there's a number of uh, assumptions or like. Uh, 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 simplified uh, uh, constraints that we have to put on these because we just don't have enough information or sometimes just not enough computing power uh, yeah. to do process a, all this a fully data faithful simulation models. yeah makes sense and there's still a lot that we're learning about the Cretaceous Pacific too you know there's, yeah. there's a lot that hasn't been done out here Can you zoom in? well that's part of this mission exactly yeah, yeah uncovering some of those secrets and mysteries. I mean, yeah, even the Hawaiian hotspot track where it, you know, we have by far uh, awesome. the hugest data set on for a true intraplate hotspot. Um, a lot of that knowledge is confined to the Hawaiian islands region because islands are much more accessible Great. than sea mounts. That's yep. that fantastic. I'm thinking so, that might be a eupleptolid okay. sponge. I think so. I think Osako mentioned Atlanticella? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I, I, I agree with that. It's beautiful. Oh, yeah, no, nice. Awesome. Atlanticella. Could you put your mic a little closer? Yep. Sorry about that. You're good. Um, yeah, I also wasn't trying to talk over your conversation, but this does okay. look like a, um, a euplectelid sponge, and Asako, um, one of our uh, ashore um, scientists, has mentioned Atlanticella for the sponge, so thank you. And it looks like it's got some crinoids and um, brittle stars on it, which is always great. Mm -hmm. 
Excellent. And I think it was a synolactid um, sea cucumber that we saw just above this. So awesome. We can zoom back out. It's an awesome sponge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my apologies for getting uh, washed away into the no. far distant 50 million year ahead future. I'm just curious yeah, what no. it's going to be like Me for too. the great, 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 great grandkids. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, we got some beautiful life in front of us right now. So yeah, we've got a lot be of more present. sponges. I mean, yeah, the story, the story of these hot spots in the Pacific from the Cretaceous to present is also a story of the people who uh, uh, live on these islands throughout the ocean, too, there because, you, uh, you know, uh, this, this big cluster of hot spots that we're all interested in, these mantle plumes uh, in the southern uh, and southeastern Pacific um, are, you know, they've long been suspected to uh, be related to um, a lot of the old Cretaceous volcanoes and atolls, and low-lying islands up in places like Micronesia, up near yeah. Wake Island, and uh, uh, you know we've uh, some of the older um, plate motion models for the Pacific haven't quite managed to get the two uh, clusters, the Cretaceous and the Young uh, seamounts, to, to match up. But we think. Uh, with some new information we got on uh, one really long-lived hotspot track uh, in the last few years, we may have, uh, you know, that permitted us to revise some uh, plate motion models, and that seems to faithfully connect uh, uh, Cretaceous and modern volcanism in, in multiple places. So that's, oh, wow. that's one of the, yeah, that's one of the uh, reasons we're out here. Uh, collecting some of these rocks from this area because this uh, this area is going to help us test that uh, you know uh, the hypothesized uh, connection between Cretaceous and modern Pacific volcanism uh, in this area. Like we we think it we we think some of these old Cretaceous volcanoes uh, up here near the Hawaiian Ridge uh, may uh, connect to uh, some some tracks down south that we can't really trace because you know some of these hot spots. Uh, Disappear these plumes, they, yeah, they disappear. Like they, they seem to go non-eruptive uh, here and there. And you know, that's another thing that we don't understand is why that happens. But um, could that be the density or the material of the crust uh, that's passing over, or is that not a decent answer? Um, it, it, it might be in in some areas, yeah. But in other places, we think it just might be that the plume just isn't very, uh, very strong for part of its history, or it, it's uh, bringing up material that's uh, particularly hard to melt. Yeah. There, there are all sorts of potential reasons, oh, and, uh, yeah. you know, we're only kind of just starting to grasp that as geochemists. And all that material is also kind of spinning a bit. Yeah, I know the plumes are fairly stable, but beneath those mantle plumes, uh, right, there's, is that softer part of the mantle? Is it softer? I'm just, I'm um, like, I'm we, totally we, making stuff up here. I'm it's, just, it's viscous. It's an assumption. It is, yeah. it is it's, viscous. It's, it's still solid, um, quite dense, uh, and yeah, uh, convecting solids. Uh, but, um, is there some layer of the mantle that is kind of uh, uh, feeling the effects of a rotating, a spinning, a spinning planet, a rotating planet? I imagine there is. Yeah. I, I, again, that's another one of those things we don't really understand. But yeah, um, yeah I think I think some uh, uh, some of my geodynamic modeling colleagues have uh, looked into that. You know, to see if maybe there's some sort of effect on. Uh, uh, mantle flow patterns uh, related to uh, rotation of the planet, you know, that uh, Coriolis effect. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't have a good answer on that, though, but I, I, I will try to look that up. Oh, well, but I didn't even have a good question on it. So no, that was an excellent question. <laughs> I've asked that question uh, more well, than once uh, to colleagues. Oh, if Dr. Val's asking the question, then I'm more impressed with myself. This is good. Yeah, no. Excellent. You, uh, you're asking some really good questions. And it's, it's just we don't have really good answers yet. <laughs> I'm also standing up to stretch. Sometimes after three I weeks being on watch, I'm uh, you gotta a lot keep of those time, legs moving. A lot of time mm -hmm. sitting in the chair. I actually was just thinking, I'm, I'm over here stretching my legs out underneath the table. <laughs> <laughs> mine, <laughs> trying I cannot. Trying to kick Robert's chair. <laughs> <laughs> mine, mine, don't, mine don't fit. Well, that's not what I typed. Thank you, autocorrect. Any initial observations, Val, on, on what we've seen in these first couple hours uh, as to, you know, what you're thinking about, you know, this question of whether this is associated with Hawaiian hotspot or 
uh, older and, and more and Cretaceous in origin? Is there Ooh. a way to sort of take our visual cues or we're going to have to wait till the rocks come back? I think with this one we're going to have to wait till the rocks come back because I'm, I'm not able to get a great gauge on how thick these manganese crusts are. Yeah, and that's since true. we're in this intersection area between uh, uh, the passage of an older Cretaceous plume and the younger, uh, somewhat younger, uh, well, relatively younger, still pretty old, uh, <laughs> Northwest Hawaiian Ridge, there's the, we, we think there's probably something on the order of uh, 60 million years oh, difference between cool. those two. Those two episodes of activity around here. Yeah, yeah we're right about at that intersection. So um, we're looking at some uh, seamounts that have uh, basically we're the first people to ever see these seamounts. Nobody's dived here before. It's amazing. And uh, uh, so we're we're only just scratching the surface, literally. And uh, yeah, we'll get a lot more information once we get rocks back to the lab. So um, not only is there that uh, that tens of millions of years of age difference between. Uh, Wine activity and uh, these these uh, this Cretaceous hotspot activity here. Um, uh, the Cretaceous rocks uh, and the plume that we think they've uh, that they're related to has a distinctive isotopic signature uh, compared to Hawaii. So we we have a couple of different ways of telling them apart. But yeah, on on, on board sometimes we uh, we bring rocks back on Herc that have. Uh, uh, particularly thick manganese crusts, and you know if I'm looking at a man manganese crust that's more th more than an inch thick, uh, generally that's a really good indicator that um, this is uh, going to be a Cretaceous rock because yeah. over time, you know, uh, the older the rock, the thicker the manganese crust gets. Um, uh, but there are also sometimes. Uh, uh, you know, collapses or uh, other changes in the uh, state of the seamount that will expose new rock faces right. well after they've been emplaced. So uh, those those won't have uh, manganese crusts that are of the same thickness. So I, I'm really cautious with that interpretation about whether it's uh, younger or older because I don't necessarily know the detailed history of the seamount. I mean, yeah. nobody does. Yeah. You know, we've never been here Total before. And we're only looking at this tiny little portion, this tiny little uh, uh, part of part of the seamount. So, um, yeah, there, there's there's a little bit of a story we can tell, but most of it, uh, you know, we can't yet. And uh, can we get a zoom on this? So thin sure. crusts are not necessarily diagnostic of uh, uh, necessarily yeah. being young. In this Just case. an FYI, I'm about to interrupt you a couple times. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. Get it. Get I, I'm it, almost done anyway, so <laughs> you can take over here in a sec. But yeah, uh, thin crust is not necessarily diagnostic of uh, Hawaiian-style volcanism. It, it might be, but there's also that chance that we're looking at a Cretaceous seamount that was later modified and then started growing, you know, new thinner crusts on uh, some recently exposed material. So. Right. Yeah, so we need we need that lab data to uh, really go and ground truth it and get to that other layer of that story. And so for this particular question from a viewer, what's the most useful thing we could find in the rocks you collected? Is that isotopic signature that becomes the most useful bit of information? Yeah, that that uh, that plus the ages um, yeah. tend to be uh, highly ah, diagnostic. Okay, I was getting really confused about this. I was like, what what are we seeing? Um, this is it's got zoanthids on it. That's why it looks so weird. Fantastic. Great. Curl it would, a little bit. Yeah. So that I have my corallium with some zoanthids on it. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's one for you, Dan. Coriolis is perturbation of mantle convection related to a two-phase convection model published in Tectonophysics in 1973. So well, people have been trying to answer this question for I a long time. i got to go back 50 years. But I tell you what, we're going to turn it into a beautiful, epic, maybe a song or a chant or some kind of story and it's going to be an isotope stories you can pre-order now mm -hmm. send in your 1499 mm -hmm. yeah. donation to nautiluslive.org yeah so it would be awesome to get a i don't know how you're doing on placement but um to get a closer zoom on the zoanthids on this one and then also get some of um those pink corals up there as okay. well let's try to go back in thanks But yeah, no, that, that's right. Coriolis does have an effect on mantle flow. It looks like, uh, scrolling through the literature here, there is, uh, um, there seems to be broad support for that. Wow. Over time. 
I must have been sense. awake it, that day in eighth grade when they were teaching <laughs> that part of Earth science. I mean, I mean it makes yeah. sense. You know, you, you see those effects in the ocean and how the atmosphere behaves. And basically, you're just looking at something that's much more viscous but still flows. So yeah. naturally, it, it, it has to be sensitive to that. Yeah. I do wonder, though, if the plumes, because of that activity and that sort of venting, that heat escape, if they sort of uh, are able to stabilize, kind of hold their position for a Taser. bit longer and kind of travel in this along this tension line where they're like, mm. the vent's here, and then they get sucked to the next spot and until uh, um, there's another chance maybe. to break through. I mean, we, we know as, as they... Uh, yeah, I as, can't. As they rise okay. through yeah. the mantle. Thank you. Wanna. All good. I mean, as, as they rise Much through the mantle, it, 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 for the most part, is expected to be vertical unless there's, you know, some sort of uh, shear or some mm -hmm. sort of uh, uh, overall flow that uh, they're going to get uh, blown around by, which okay. we think can happen in certain uh, certain circumstances. But once they, once they uh, impact Cards underneath the uh, lithosphere, the movement of that lithosphere does draw uh, the, the, the top of the plume conduit out and uh, can smear it along the uh, plate motion vector. So there, there is a little bit of uh, uh, deformation of the uh, plume conduit that way. How do we image or model that? Ridges. Hmm? How do we image or model that? How do we know? Ooh, that what is a good question. Yeah, yeah, we don't need it. These are just, uh, that just burst into my no, brain. No, 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 that's, that's a great question. Uh, and I actually do have an answer for it. So um, we can, uh, uh, you know, we, we what obviously. What about this pink coral? Would we, or yeah, would we be able to I get think, a I think it might be a little easier. Same issue? Or, okay, great. Yeah. Let me see if I can get it a little bit closer. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, we've been seeing a lot of these Walteria sponges. Uh, I think some Califacus sponges. Um, we also were looking at, um, I think, uh, a Sacrament uh, suggested a Paragorgid with uh, some zoanthids on it, which is always interesting. Zoanthids are, are still corals, um, but they uh, parasitize other corals. Um, so and now we're looking at these pink corals, and it actually some of these Walt dead Walteria are looking pretty interesting. Like they've got um, some other organisms on top of them as well. And then we've also been seeing some of these um, branching planar bamboo corals, which is um, also interesting. Mm -hmm. Sorry to interrupt your. No, it's fine. That's operational fascinating stuff. Fascinating geology. Mm -hmm. We like it when you bring the life in. So it's all connected. <clears throat> with this, uh, this question about how do we how do we model or see this? So this oh is an example gosh. I'm showing you here. Um, we can do something called uh, geodynamic modeling, where we can uh, uh, basically prime a uh, computational model uh, meant to uh, design to represent uh, mantle conditions with some sort of an instability that uh, we, then we uh, over a period of time in the model we can let. Uh, we can let run out and it, it simulates this uh, uh, 2d or 3d environment depending on what uh, what you're uh, trying to study and uh, uh, you can uh, see the evolution of some of these uh, uh, thermochemical structures within the mantle and uh, every now and again they upwell at certain places yeah and you can see they kind of pool under the surface up there and That's those crazy. are uh, mantle plumes mm -hmm. and we can also um let's see i'm gonna try to find something else here I had no idea that they were that, um, I don't know, apparent? That sort of like, uh, well, that, that's such just, a yeah. distinct feature, you know? It's um, like, you know. sort of. But yeah, that, that that's just a model simulation yeah. there. But um, they're, uh, this is a little too abstract, I think. Uh, I don't like that one. Um, we can actually take seismic data. Yeah, that's the uh, maximum zoom there. OK, yeah. I'm Fighting the current a little bit right here, trying to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you need me to awesome. shut up for a minute? No, 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 you're fine. You're fine. Okay. <laughs> That's not you. <laughs> well, um, just so in case that changes. No, it's me. I keep asking for difficult zooms. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> Those yeah. darn biologists. So That's all right. Thank you, though. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So there's this technique called uh, it, it's it's an inversion technique uh, called seismic tomography, and we can take. Uh, uh, earthquakes from certain parts of the world that, uh, and, and since earthquakes, they don't just, uh, their, their seismic waves don't just travel across the surface. They, they also go down inside the earth and they can uh, uh, pass through certain boundary layers. Some uh, parts of that energy can be reflected or refracted uh, through other boundary layers within the, the earth too. So we can, we can get these complex uh, patterns picked up by seismic stations. And those give us 
um, information about the interior layers of the Earth. That's yep. that's how we discovered that uh, Earth has a core, for example. We could see in our si in our oh. seismic data. Um, this uh, is, looks like that uh, the sea cucumber's gone for a swim. Oh, sure enough. Mm -hmm. But it's not one of the uh, pelagic sea cucumbers. It's just popped up off the seafloor a little bit. Okay. Although I could be wrong. I, I'm getting it. It's a. It is difficult to see, but yeah. No, yeah, that does. It looks like one of our uh, senolacted sea cucumbers just uh, hanging out, swimming. Look at that. That's fun. Can I get you a member? Sure. <laughs> When I've seen these swim, it's like they are doing crunches. This one's kind of taking a leisurely right, swim. Right, this one's more sailing. <laughs> <laughs> it's more how I would move if I were one of those sea cucumbers. Is that a kite no in, core work. in the corner? Um, I didn't get a good look at it. I couldn't see if it, it had like scales. It's like one of those segmented worms, or maybe scaled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It could have just been a limpet, too. So Yeah. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's always cool to see those things and swimming around. Yeah, Absolutely. definitely. Yeah, and this uh, so this whole tomography thing is interesting because you know it tells us about the interior structure of the Earth, and not uh, not necessarily to high resolution, but you take enough of these earthquakes uh, that have passed through a certain area, and you can actually uh, turn these into. Um, uh, a, a tomographic image, which uh, uh, gives us an idea of like, you know, sometimes geochemists call it redite versus uh, blueite, um, you know, hotter or colder regions. Um, and uh, it's it's not uncommon that it, uh, there's also like a chemical element, so both sure. thermal and chemical, that's causing some of these contrasts that we see. Um, hot and cold corresponds basically to slower velocities oh, versus fish. faster velocities that we're seeing. So, yeah. So yeah, we can we can detect these these little changes in velocity uh, that are related to heat or composition or whatever, and uh, we can see structures inside the Earth where we have good enough resolution power. You know, we have like enough enough earthquakes or good enough seismic coverage to get a good this image in an different. area. So here you can see actually like a, in cross section of the mantle, you can see. Uh, where remember? this tomography reveals okay. a uh, subducting slab. Yep. And sometimes, um, let's see a good example. Of, uh, yeah. So here's here's a cross section. Uh, These are mantle slabs, oh, not uh, not crust slabs. It's, it's a crust fish. slab. It's a crust slab. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's where uh, oceanic crust is being subducted yep, into subducted. the mantle, and you see that that blue cold velocity fast uh, parcel going into the mantle. So Got that's it. that's uh, yeah cold stuff that used to be at the surface. And then here, in this example, um, yeah, you can see a cross-section of the mantle. So this is the surface, that's the core mantle boundary. You can see this red blob here coming up, and then you can see it getting diverted in the upper mantle here. Yeah. So that's what we think a plume might look like. And it's, it's, it's getting still dragged kind of low resolution, bit. so we yeah. can't really find like the fine details or uh, anything that can really tell us about like uh, you know how these plumes behave necessarily, but we can see that that uh, thermochemical upwelling yeah. from earthquake the... data. Oh, slightly I'm getting, curved uh, tail. My geology 101 course here. Sorry for everyone who's already took uh, this, but I didn't take it in college. This is fascinating. I love it. Thank yeah, you, this, this stuff is amazing. And yeah, so that's what we think. You know, this is an example of what we think uh, Hawaii might look like. Although yeah. I think this is yeah, this was this was a uh, done for Tahiti down yep. in the Cook Austral Islands. And that's a really hard area to image because the resolution there isn't very good. We don't have a lot of like uh, seismic stations around yeah. the world that are placed in the in the right areas to uh, get detail on that. But it's also like dynamically speaking for plume folks, uh, one of the more important areas that this we're interested in looking at too. Oh, cool. So this fish actually has a bit of a. It's not the the tail of a grenadier that we're used to seeing. Um, Looks like that potato head fish without the potato. Yeah, uh, yeah. Little bit. yeah. it's not yeah. quite the cusk eel, um, but it's not the shape of a cutthroat eel, which also has some of that that branching. Would it be er, a ophido? It could be an ophidiform fish. It reminds me of, of their head um, shape. It does. Yes, the head shape 
Oh, you might be, com yes, I think you're completely correct. Cuckoo. Great, Kukui. Doing amazing. Aww, yeah. You. I learned from all of you folks. Oh, Kukui, come on. Awesome, thank you for looking at that fish. It was hard to identify. Mm -hmm. Oh, what's that little? Kukui is her own library of knowledge. Beacon of light, we're lucky to have her as a teacher and then friend and mm -hmm. shipmate and logging all of this data. Otherwise, it would be given the titles that I give them, like, or that I steal from <laughs> other van mates, like Potato Head. Oh, bad titles. They're so, they're so creative. <laughs> Thanks, Kukui. What do we have? What yeah, so once treats? Kukui reminded me, um, mentioned uh, a fit a day, um, uh, I went through the Benthic Animal Guide, and there is this cute little black fish that pretty much matches what we were seeing. Um, Basilizetus, um, which uh, has that round potato head, but it also has the the actual um, the actual tail caudal fin um, instead of just the um, pointed caudal fin. So that is my best educated guess. Beautiful. Mahalo, Virginia. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So vandal plumes, we think, may not be necessarily steady state either. So we think that we're starting like some of the some of the newer ideas is that these plumes may pulse. You know, they might take up like like blobs of uh, material and kind of ebb and flow a little bit. So right. that that potentially is a reason why we might see some of these go non-eruptive for go a while. Non-eruptive for quite some time because if. If in yeah. fact these are Cretaceous in uh, in origin, these the seamounts that we are exploring in this region of Papahanaumokuakea, um, that's going to suggest there's quite an expanse of the Pacific where we don't necessarily pick up this hot spot again. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, because we we think it's located. Uh, we think that plume is currently located uh, under uh, the Polynesian Triangle and, uh, oh, under wow. one of the archipelagos there, and we can only trace that one back like three, five million years at most. Oh, wow. And then we just don't see any seamounts forming a trail. It just goes quiet for 80 million years, 60 Once million years. back yeah, in the, it, it might uh, pick up again. It, it might or, pick up no, again. that Sorry. was so wrong <laughs> with the Walteria sponges. <laughs> I just called all these sponges a, a coral. Um, but yeah, I know, right? That's just where my brain's at. Um, yeah, so that's pretty interesting. We've moved back into the Walteria sponge zone. Um, and uh, oh, we've got a we've got a little swimming brisingid. Um Yeah, that's pretty cool. Would it be? Wait, no, those are more Walteria. Would it be possible to get a zoom on this uh, coral here? I don't think we've seen that yet. Okay. Dr. Val, maybe we continue over mm -hmm. lunch or rock o'clock, rock sawing later. I'm 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 fascinated. I want to keep learning. And I want to make sure we identify and spot as much of this life as we Yeah, as we definitely. Can. We're, we're on two totally different subjects in the I van know. right well, now. It's all the same. It's all the same. It's yeah. just uh, it's just Kanaloa. It's just the deep time. It's just the deep ocean. Mm -hmm. Rocks lay the foundation. These volcanoes lay the foundation for this life to flourish. We just yeah. have to be able to think in different time spans than our uh, really have to, yeah. social media attention. I'm not pulling on you, Bob. Okay. Okay. Can I just get a zoom right here, Amber? Thanks, Amy. Yeah, it looks like we've got... Yeah, like I've had to train my brain to uh, switch between thinking about things that, you know, the, the Pico or even femtogram level oh, yeah, uh, materials in the lab around. some days yeah. and switch over to billions there. of years. <laughs> That's right. So, like, I, I'm working well, across sponge. too many zeros. That's it. Cool little associate inside there. Like we've got a pearl star, maybe some shrimp. Hey, buddy. Here. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Oh, wait. Are there? Oh, there's zoanthas on this one again. That's why. <laughs> Uh, 
fantastic. Tina thinks, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Tina thinks from Noid. Yeah, on the, the back one. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Um, and then there were zoanthids on that other coral with the um, the opioid on it. Yeah, and the lava Excellent. flows are making some really nice Thank ledges you. Yep. Yeah. for all of these. You see, you see uh, these these stacks of lava flows and uh, some of the valleys that have eroded out on Oahu, uh, definitely in Kauai. You see all these uh, layers, often a little bit tilted, uh, just stacking on top of each other over and over and over. see some really good examples of this kind of uh, cross-section in uh, Waimea Canyon in Kauai. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is a real... Oh, what's this? Can we get a zoom on this? Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. oh, trying to. Remember? Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Looks like a nice crinoid on top of that uh, primnoid as well. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's always wonderful, the, the intersection of geology and biology, mm -hmm. um, you know. They're talked of as two completely separate groups, but really and truly, like, the geology is so important for, for these organisms. And also, you know, there is, some organisms can can like weather rocks and um, yeah definitely you know there there is there is, there is an area where they they come together so Pro some of these probably also host a uh, uh, rich range of bacteria oh yeah absolutely yep mm -hmm. not to mention uh, all of the islands these plumes form that uh, have given so many people a home yeah oh absolutely. And just, uh, you know, the substrate type as well as the roughness and um, these formations can be really um, important to the types of communities that we see. Oh, they've got a little shrimp, mm -hmm. um, which is so interesting. There have been a couple studies that have looked at uh, the substrate specifically, whether it be like um, carbonate or basalt or manganese to see, um, you know, what, what communities that we get different. Um, and then there, you know, but also one of the most important things is, is the actual structure of, of the, yeah, the sea floor. Because you need that accessibility to the water column. Correct. Yeah, we've talked about it a couple of times, how important it is um, for, um, for these corals that, that utilize food falling from, you know, elsewhere, from usually from the surface, how important it is for these corals to get access to the currents. Um, Wow, that's funny. It looks like that sponge is free floating. It kind of does. The stock's so thin. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so these, it's uh, a lot of these corals, as well as the sponges and all of their associates, will utilize the the height of boulders and um, even cobbles and uh, outcrops. It's one of the reasons why we find so many of these um, organisms on the ridges that we that we mm -hmm. try to try to get on top of. And so yeah, it's. Uh, it's it's uh, the geology is really important for for these organisms as well. It sure is. 
And I feel like a lot of times it's like that habitat complexity, like what you folks were, were mentioning that kind of intersects both geology and biology together that makes it so critical for how these um, ecosystems form and thrive and change throughout time. Yeah, very true. So that was one of the things that we could see when we were uh, diving on the aircraft carriers uh, down on the abyssal plain, mm. where you just have very thick, like tens if not hundreds of meters of sediment. Mm. Uh, so it's a completely different uh, geological setting uh, that um, uh, is going to host obviously very different kinds of life than what we can find on uh, these seamounts where there's rocky substrate. So these. Uh, these seamounts aren't necessarily just mantle hotspots, they're biological hotspots, too. Yeah. It's one of the things that I really appreciate about uh, many indigenous communities around the world, including the Hawaiians, kind of retaining that uh, that worldview that has all of these things interconnected and interwoven with one another, um, understanding that our stories go way further back in time than, uh, than we can even really imagine, but uh, inviting that deep time um, into as part of the story and, mm -hmm. and uh, seeing that uh, you know, all, of, all of the parts of this planet have carry, in the words of the Hawaiians, mana, um, an energy, a spirit, something that uh, is contributing to uh, making life on this planet possible, supporting it thriving. And, uh, yeah, even the pohaku, or maybe especially the pohaku, the stones. Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, something science, or Western science, tries to section things into boxes, and I think it's really important to remind ourselves that those boxes are man-made, yep, right? right? These differences between between organisms are, are just a mindset, um, or between yeah. organisms, but also between, you know, these different fields of science. Um, you know, it's... Oh, yeah. Well, it, it makes it easier to think about, but it can also be restrictive, so... Um, yeah. yeah. The, the it's like, it's like how, how exactly do you classify a volcano sedimentary rock? Uh, you can't use the, uh, the traditional, like, boxes that we... Uh, that we uh, define for folks when you're just learning geology. Right, how do you section an ocean? Yeah, you I know? mean, the, the more you learn, the, the more you realize things are a little bit of uh, a gray area because nature is not oh, this clean is and cool. simple like that. Nature is awesome and Amber? a little bit messy. And, uh, uh, you know, we do the best we can with our understanding, but there are certain circumstances, you know, uh, uh, life, geology, whatever, that don't necessarily uh, fit neatly into what, um, in, into some of these mm -hmm. strict definitions that we like to use, and that's yeah. okay. You know, we we have to learn to accept that. And uh, this is really cool. I'm sorry, I'm interrupting. No, but okay. This is Let's really cool. This is again um, those uh, mm -hmm. zoanthids or parazoanthids that are on top of that corallid. Um, which is just so interesting to me. You can see it, it's starting to grow over the skeleton and it's actually gotten to the base as well. Um, and so, and we've seen several of these on this site, more so I think than we've seen elsewhere, um, especially as we haven't actually seen a super high density of these uh, corallids here. So that's, mm -hmm. that's really interesting to me. Um, that's pretty cool. Um, Excellent. Thank you for that zoom. Uh -huh. I've always thought, uh, maybe not always, but I remember actually um, that Walteria mm -hmm. <laughs> writing yes. uh, writing about this. That it, to me, it's the the divisions are useful, mm -hmm. but um, but it's the space between that is the, where we should be focusing our attention. And I think we just have gotten distracted over over time on focusing on the various compartments we've created rather than the relationships between them and and I think if there's a balance of that then I, th I think uh, it's an easy habit to make to try to uh, you know stick things within the bounds of what you're you know in into these definitions into these bins uh, it, it's just more comfortable that way and it can be very uncomfortable when that is not the case you know it kind of goes against some of your paradigms and 
Mm. You, know, you have to learn how to uh, shift those or expand them in certain ways. Sometimes rethink them entirely. And uh, science can be a little slow to do that at times, but uh, the march of progress is inexorable. So mm -hmm. um, I think it eventually do change. Sometimes they catastrophically change yeah. too, like with the plate tectonics revolution in the 60s. That's right. So. I think it's also important to remember that it's just some science, right? It's it's published science. There's also science that's that's gone on for generations. Um, you know, traditional ecological knowledge is I mean right, that's a science, yeah. but um, it's know. just you know it's not it's not published in journals, but it's just as important. Um, right. Yeah. Exactly. And something that should be incorporated into into. Unfortunately, Western science can be a little slow to pick that up too. Yes. You yeah. Know. It's one of the reasons why uh, kids, as we were talking about earlier, we love connecting with um, youth from all over the world, and the young ones especially. Um, they have not yet learned to see the world divided into all these compartments. They still largely mm -hmm. uh, process the world as a whole, as an integrated whole, very much focused on relationships, and uh, uh, it's not until we shove them into those boxes and uh, for and test them on it that they, <laughs> they, <laughs> somet they sometimes... Uh, you know, end up thinking that's the way the world is, not just something that we've uh, we've made up to help us, you know, to help us figure it out. So it's, uh, I, I love, again, the young ones teaching us, uh, reminding us to appreciate all of the ways that the world is interconnected and can be understood as a whole, not just all its separate parts. And speaking on traditional ecological knowledge, I think it's, um I did a research paper sophomore year of college that there are some published papers um, based on traditional ecological knowledge, but it was more so trying to find that intersection between the two mm -hmm. realms. Mm -hmm. And so I think, um, as you folks were saying, it, it will take some time, but you can see those those buds starting to, to blossom in that way when you see a lot of these, when you see some of these papers and these journals starting to be published about this certain branch of study using traditional ecological knowledge while also tying it into um, current practices as well. Or I shouldn't say current practices, but more, uh, I guess, I don't know the right word for it. Like Western science? So-called yeah, Western, so -called Western yeah. approaches. Yeah. 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 It, it, it basically taking a more holistic approach to how we're, how we're doing that science. Yeah, I think that's the way to go forward, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is always interesting to, to to read some of those locations where they've been able to include that information. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I hope it's something that we're able to continue in the future. Definitely. And, uh, do more of. What? Okay. Back up a little bit. I'll just let in the current take me. Let me back up then. Oh, I do. I see it, yeah. Front row doing an amazing job as always while we... Uh, question and pontificate back here in the in the science row mm -hmm. speculate and wonder and get a little too stuck on mantle plumes folks <laughs> up front getting the job done and we appreciate yeah. you guys Ooh. well on our way to waypoint four that's another oh, beautiful branching planar bamboo in front of us along with these Walteria sponges and looks like another zoanthid covered uh corallid and Oh, um, I think that might be one of those Caliphacus sponges. Oh, yeah, right mm -hmm. here. One of those stock sponges. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, and a shrimp. <laughs> I oh, noticed it because I, I think I'm starting to miss those, like, uh, absolutely overwhelming splashes of color that we were that we were cruising through just a couple nights ago. And, mm -hmm. and uh, these are beautiful, but, you know, so things are kind of blending in and not quite the same, but still, mm. still awesome. This feature, oh, yeah. I still wish I could see this mountain as a whole. Me too. Yeah, it is amazing to be able to get to see this, uh, this little snapshot into the into this communities the communities here um, you know because these these can change with the uh, I mean obviously these communities change spatially whether with depth or or um, latitudinally like across you know even within a depth zone but um, you know also with time 
Um, in some of the in some of the sites seamounts we've seen, we've seen um, a lot of holdfasts and stalks that have been broken off, with uh, surrounded by uh, different or similar corals. So there have been multiple generations, you know. Um, so who knows if uh, you know we we see some of those holdfasts there on this rock in front of us. Also maybe some other smaller organisms and. What what would we see in ten years from now, or ten years previously? It could be the same. Take that another hundred years. What do you see? It's yeah. uh, you know these are just snapshots that we're getting. It's pretty amazing. Oh, okay. I mean, thinking about that in AI, has anybody done no, those uh, like the lensa, like what you could look like in uh, other scenarios, or what you're going to look like when you're much. When you're much older, has anybody no. tried any of those yet? No, I have not. No? Wow. We could have all shared yeah. our what we're going to look like at 80. I'll wait for you then. I'll kind of sit here. Uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting. You're coming I haven't towards me, Catalina, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I haven't quite gotten into it yet. Well, actually, sorry. Yeah, Maybe like I'm a little kind of watching like how the ethical way. landscape okay. of AI is okay. evolving. Smart. Yeah. Yeah. Smart. Yeah, I'll, just, yeah. I'll wait for you then. Oh. oh. There's going to be the good, the bad, and the ugly, that's for sure. Oh, it's growing <laughs> there with is. new tech. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Mm. yeah, there's a strong movement, as a speaking of traditional ecological knowledge uh, of, of indigenous AI, um, and oh. even uh, coding new algorithms. Um, I think if, if it's possible, it'd be great to get a zoom on this little. Uh, can't because my the uh, leash is really tight right now. So. All good. Thank you. So I gotta I gotta wait for him to come over me. Totally good. Totally good. What are you thinking that could be? Uh, it's pretty clear. It's pretty low attached to the rock. It doesn't look like a sponge. So there's I mean it, there's a chance that could be any number of things. But I'm thinking it could be a predatory tunicate. Tunicate. Mm -hmm. Cool. So I think we're gonna get pulled off on this bearing. Um, is the current see. just too strong? No. So the ship movement did stop. Um, I can pull like down here. Yeah, I can do that straight south. <laughs> yeah, it's not the current. It's just the, the. This is not a straight line. It's got. It goes in and out. Ah, so okay. It's a little zigzaggy ridge. Yeah, we we noticed that during some of the dive planning <laughs> last night. Did the best we could with it, but we get pulled off. We get pulled off. We'll uh, we'll resettle somewhere else. right now I'm not pulling on it I'm just okay. yeah you got you can get down and look at it okay I believe I am incorrect. I think that's a sponge. Mm -hmm. Wait, no. I think that is a sponge. Yeah, it is a sponge. But it does look very similar to some of these predatory tunicates. Ooh. Ooh. Definitely sponge. Thank you for that. <laughs> very helpful. It's just that wall we've got so mm -hmm. close. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, let's get out of there. Yeah. Great. Thank you, though. That was actually very helpful. Approaching waypoint four along our dive track, uh, which represents a little local high. So once we hit that, um, the RV will have to the RVs will have to go slightly downhill for a little bit, and then pick up that uphill again toward waypoint five. We'll have a couple of those along this track. There's uh, it's kind of a knobbly seamount, sort of like yesterday's. 
We'll see. See how quickly we can get there. It might be uh, might be the next watch. We're just under an hour left in the greatest watch the world has ever known. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 8 to 12, NA-154. Write it down, folks. Oh, by the way, my mom um, did confirm that uh, she believes that we are the best watch. <laughs> <laughs> but she also requires... Uh, Daniel to seeing the girl from Ipanema. Oh. <laughs> so, oh, I like it. Oh, 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 oh. Absolutely. You know, he was walking around. Tan, young and lovely, the girl from Ipanema goes walking by. <laughs> as she passes, all those she passes go, ah. <laughs> Well, keep going, done. keep going. That's beautiful. She, yeah. moves, she moves like samba. <laughs> no, I can't, 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 can't. <laughs> oh, that was good. beautiful, though. Oh. I could oh, catch no. him humming bits of it for the rest of the afternoon. <laughs> okay, I'm going to spin out as a wrap. Yeah, that's why I was playing closer to you. I have to play everybody uh, a beautiful recommendation. Another another sad song, another, another wahine that gets away to the ocean. Catalina shared with us yesterday, Catalina Del Mar. Um, yeah, gave that a listen. It's a giant anthemastus there. Oh. Right on the far left part of the screen. Anthemastus. That's a mushroom coral. Yes. Oh, oh. yes. I see you. I'm learning. Oh yeah, that is a true, a true, uh, that is an anthemastus there, next to the ulterior sponges. And it's a big one, you're right, yeah. it is. It's almost, it's almost dan sized. <laughs> Darn it, I think I had just gotten that song out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to see another Lipanema anyways, it would have reminded you. Yep. <laughs> Thank you, Kukui's mom. That's the easiest time in a long time I've, I've uh, had in uh, memorizing a new bio word. So for yeah. some reason, our viewership just went down by 95%. I don't know <laughs> what, <laughs> what happened. <laughs> what happened? Oh, where'd you all go online, huh? All right, I promise. Won't happen again. And let's go quiz mom asks. Maybe they're all watching the Falcor now. <laughs> <laughs> Scared them all away. <laughs> yeah, they'll come back. This ball so Maybe weird. it's lunchtime. Can I get a zoom real quick? <laughs> mm -hmm. Looks like a nice anthemastus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had a couple of visitors with us for most of yesterday, too. Oh, this beautiful oceanic <laughs> white tip song. Just Actually, wanted to go give them a hug. I saw a yellowfin at one point swimming with oh, one of the mahi, sharks maybe? yesterday. Wow. Big mahi? Awesome. So, uh, or a tuna. I, don't, I don't know my fish, but it had a yellow fin. The rest of its body uh, was, well, it looked blue because it was in the ocean. But, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah the, very a striking, tail fin? forked, bright yellow tail. Yeah, mahi mahi, mm. beautiful. Those yeah, are so such one of incredible our scientists fish. The shore has, um, has identified this as an Anthemastus tahinotus. Nice. Tahinotus, so. And, and mentioned that it is actually very large. So awesome. Thank you for that zoom. Uh -huh. mm -hmm, much appreciated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had we had a couple sharks yesterday. A couple sharks um, and some fish. Squid the other night. Uh, yeah, behind lots the boat. of squid. Uh, really and a awesome. sea butterfly. Oh, yeah. What is a sea butterfly? Yeah. Yes. Well, a It was really cool. I'll Google it for you. <laughs> yeah, the true I could Google this myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's spelled weird. Pteropod has a P in it. <laughs> kind of like Tinopore with its C. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So they're oh, wow. uh, specialized. They're free swimming pelagic, um, uh, like snails and uh, sea slugs. It's a very delicate shell. Yes. It's, very, it's transparent. Yes, partly. they are. They are. They do have very delicate shells. They're. Um, I mean, they have to be pretty lightweight to be able to still stay up in the, the yeah. water column. So. Oh, no, they're giving tumbling snails a run for their money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Don't betray the tumbling snail. Well, you just came to the side of the tumbling snail. <laughs> no, I haven't, I haven't actually seen a pteropod yet, but that's really cool that... Uh, yeah. Do you know which watch spotted that? Uh, 
it was in the uh, it was next to the boat. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's just drifting along. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mahina, welcome back. Uh, we all just sang a line from our favorite song, so it's your turn now. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Sing us a line. Um, under the sea. Put me on it. the spot like that. <laughs> that is a good one. But yes. oh, now I'm gonna start singing that one. Oh. I know. <laughs> the girl from Ipanema under the sea. I think. <laughs> I see a great music okay. video coming together in my mind, you yes. know, of everyone just working and then pan and I then boom, sing. I think we're going to have to boom, come down. Sing. Do 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 yes. Um, great ship to shore, actually, with Iolani High School, wow. uh, their oceanography class. Uh, really great questions about some of our machinery, our ROVs, what depths uh, they can reach, and some of their capabilities. Uh, a lot of uh, sampling questions, actually, oh, and students concerned about how we carry out um, work and if we ever endanger mm -hmm. any species. Or so, yeah, just really Aww. reassuring that we're in great hands. We have all yeah. of these young Kiki, these, these young kids, and Haumana students that are ready for the challenge. That's amazing. You know? All right. That's great to hear. Yeah, really fun. Thanks for doing that, Mahina. No, of course. Yeah, those are definitely, the ship to shores are such a fun way. Um, you know, I will say it's it's always fun and re-energizing that we have young groups of kids, you know, the <laughs> elementary, intermediate, middle school level, because their enthusiasm, you yes. can just feel it through the screen. I love um, it. But our high school students have a lot of great, great questions. The altimeter has it? It's really fun to interact with. The awesome. or the? Yeah. It's awesome. That's fun. That's yeah, fun, so the problem is, see your Doppler's going red? Because we're on this big, that's the, yeah. Yeah. Robert Waters, Zach Gonzalez, just getting us back in the right position as uh, currents and ridge is windy and tricky face to move along. Constant communication, maka'ala have to be paying attention all the time. We can we can wander off down our rabbit holes, but uh, the front sure row, yeah. front row, keeping it focused. We appreciate you guys so much. And I've just been loving all of these, uh, the views from the Atalanta cam. Mm -hmm. And we were showing this during our ship to shore interaction and it got many oohs and ahs from the audience. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, really cool to see. Um, the back deck has a smiley face again too, so. Hey. Yes. 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 Paradise yes. is paradise, no trouble. I love it. <laughs> That's right. Well, it's not up on the quad cam, but sometimes is. You can, uh, you can see our our back deck, our A-frame, and our fenders. Some of our line out there smiling at you when you get a good look. Always yeah. makes my day. So funny. I was talking uh, to Ken, the deck chief, and we were just laughing about the, the back deck. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, it's just the mood. Just it's the, the mood. mood. Just the mood. Depending it's a vibe. on the day. It's a vibe. <laughs> when they were working it. down below, there was no. <laughs> actually, yeah, yesterday I didn't actually have no smiley face. Oh, nice. All mahalo, Amber. Oh, working her magic, Amber. Yes. Put it up oh. there for you to enjoy that smiley face. Mm. Is that what? Smiley face and calm seas. <laughs> what were you saying, Zach? Yeah, so I think yesterday or the day before yesterday, it was no smiley face. <laughs> <laughs> I did yeah. notice that, yeah. He changed it? He changed yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a frowny face, it was just like... like a straight. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Does it become like an open mouth, like like shocked face when we get into rough seas? Like I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> or just like a squiggle, like... <laughs> Have a, wow. have a great uh, couple of questions coming in from Burlington Edison High School in Washington State in their Oceans and Technology class. What a great class. Love this. Ooh, Wish hey, they welcome. had that when I was in school. And yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, so we have 16 cool. students there. Want to give you guys a shout oh, out, say fantastic. thank you for tuning in. And they're, they're wondering, 
They're wondering, have we ever been scared by anything that we saw on the video feed? And then what is the most interesting thing that we've seen so far on this Ala Amwana Kaiuli expedition, either here on the surface or down below? Any thoughts? Scariest thing is seeing a rock wall to your left. All <laughs> 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 the pilot himself. So that's, yeah, that comes up way too often. <laughs> <laughs> oh, moving along in Herc, and all of a sudden the video screen's right in the middle, right up against a rock face. That's uh, it's always a little nerve wracking. Yeah, that's a good answer. Or like nice when the gains went a little funny uh, the other week. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, that was scary. Yeah. But yeah, actually, the okay. scariest thing is when it all goes black up it here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was going to say. That's yeah. in a couple times on ROV dives when I've been on. When everything, it starts to go fuzzy, yeah. and then you're on a wall, and then everything goes black, and the yeah. pilots are just, like, panicking, and you're just sitting in the back row like, ooh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, I'm not going to ask what's wrong. We don't panic. No, no. <laughs> no, no. Never. No, they're just, Never. yeah. Heart rate goes up a little. So. Oh, man. No, Robert just walks out and gets a cookie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cookie, coffee, Cheetos, good. You know, it's a, it's amazing actually because uh, with all this technology, Amber, can I get a it, zoom right here? I think there's something in this hole. I keep yeah. seeing it moving. Oh. Mm. Could be know. something scary. Hold on, if you guys are still listening. <laughs> Maybe nothing. I think it's just light. Edison. It's just a light. Yep, it's just a rock. Oh. <laughs> oh. Hey, I'm not the only person in this band now who's been fooled by a rock. We yeah. see, that's right. <laughs> it looked like it moved, but it was just a shadow. I was like, oh, look at this. We cool. see a lot of monsters the in the be, shadows. The, the, the rocks shadows. can be really sneaky sometimes. See how it looks? Sneaky see in that rocks. hole right there, yeah. right above the lasers? It looked like there's something in there. Yeah. So. Um. Is that is that yeah. what our short team is talking about? No, not this. It was something just to the right. Um. I was taking pictures of it with the still cam, and so I missed uh the conversation that was happening. That was the totally involved. I was. To, uh, yeah. The, the shore. Um, Whoops. A scientist a short oh, chat. Bad watch lead. Um, no problem. You're doing great. <laughs> Something to the right. You're not crashing the ROVs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most interesting I don't know thing if we'll we've be able seen to so find far. it again. Uh, there was a it was a Chrysogorgia that was um, um, very long and branching. We yeah, we zoomed in on it, I think. Yeah. Um, I think it might be to your left. Really? If we because I think we panned right, right? Was it the uh, one that was like on the wall? And yeah. Just kind of that really big one? Yeah. Burlington so. Edison, we'll be right back to your questions. We're just uh, going to make sure we get oh, a yeah, good look. Oh, yeah, you're there right, Shukui. Right there. there it is. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so there's some thought that it could be a small metallic orgia. It looks pretty tall to me. Um, so they. Yeah, so it is branching. Let's see, I don't see an ophiroid, so I think it is just a, a sparsely branched Chrysogorgia. Zach, are we good for me to try a little baby zoom? Yeah. Uh, yep, confirm this is the uh, specimen that they're interested in. Now, we haven't seen another of these. Um, we are still permitted to collect uh, according to the permit. Yeah. Yeah, like now if, we it's, don't, if it's something do we new. Have, um, do we have coral snip? Like, do we have cutters on the arms? Yeah. Yes. <coughs> so we would be able to take just a, just a yeah, portion of this? Yeah, the challenge mm -hmm. would be it's you know, it's in the open. water. Yeah. Oh, it's in the <laughs> yeah. water. Yeah, because where it's at, look, back up, Amber. It's just. I mean, yeah. we could. <laughs> if, uh, if it's going to be exceptionally difficult, with, and there's a risk of but taking. But that might be fun. <laughs> that might be fun. Let's yeah. go. Well, one of the, really the things big. is, is <laughs> I don't want to accidentally take the whole organism because we haven't no. seen another yeah, one. Yeah, it's going to end up. So perfect. it's whether, whether so. we can get okay. stable enough. So I think we need to move in closer because I'm already down at five meters of delta and we're stretched out so mm -hmm. and we can't have any we can't have any bounce if you're gonna try and do a midwater grab. Right. Right. 
We love you, scientists ashore, for giving us these amazing, impossible tasks. Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> puts Aquaman well, and gotta fix it. our young Padawan. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> we're, we're stretched out. We can't do it. Yeah, unless okay. we move in closer. Yeah, I'm trying to. This ridge feels like it just like changes orientation. Yeah. It does. I mean, if we can't do it, we can just have our eyes out for I think it, one. it's going to take a while if we need to do She's it. She's already moved her off it's pretty okay. far, too. So yeah, the not. move is done. Yeah. That's okay. We got some good okay. pictures of it, Yeah, too. We, we've got confirmation. Yeah, I think it's them. a no-go. Okay, yeah. great. Um, Science Ashore is okay with that. All right. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, but probably keep an eye out for something that looks similar, if we okay. can. It's Thanks. amazingly long. Yeah. It's impressive. Yeah, it is. Uh, maybe that's what we were hoping for, some of its super DNA. Extra tall Chrysogorgia. Yeah. I don't know. Sorry? <laughs> what? <laughs> Virginia's like, no, that makes no sense. What did she? <laughs> I just didn't. <laughs> I don't think she heard we, the first part. Uh, my brain we, just we like was not computing. We were going to collect so we could do some genetic analysis to see some yes. of its super long Chrysogorgia DNA. Actually, yes, that would be that would be an important factor. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, you were completely correct. <laughs> but also um, identify, you know, the species and thing. Yeah. yeah. Robert, are you the flip out Atlanta around to face her? Or so I really can't. You can't right now. Yeah, yeah. okay. I'll just turn towards you. I'll just head beeline for you real quick then. Because it almost looks like the, uh, it looks like there's like a wall between the two right now. It. I think there is. Look. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So Adelina's on the other side right now. Okay. So let me get around to. Uh, So that goes back to the question of the uh, most interesting thing we've seen so far in this expedition. It's hard to pick. I mean, we've got, yeah. uh, from my perspective, uh, I've seen some really cool geology and cross section. I'm always a fan of seeing some uh, volcanic plumbing, but uh, we did do um, uh, those dives on uh, the Battle of Midway Carriers, uh, and that is one of the most unique things that I've ever done at sea, if not the most unique thing. <laughs> That was uh, so humbling. I think we all just realized that it was something we would never forget. Uh -huh. Yeah, that was that was definitely up there. Yeah. Definitely it up was. there for me. Are we in a little crater? No, this is weird. <laughs> <laughs> we found a crater, Val. Uh -oh. oh no, it's just I guess just because the he's, he's spinning. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. No, no, it's definitely still a wall. They've turned. Yeah. yeah. Oh shit. But I am trying to get over it. Let's see. I think we might have oh fallen wow, just off to the other side of the ridge. Here. Okay. Let's see. For me, the the only th the moment when I was okay. a little bit scared and the most interesting moment happened to be the same, and it was uh, some of you may remember, we came across uh, what looked like five large pohaku, five large stones that had looked like they had kind of cracked apart. It almost looked like a mm. some door had been broken yes. open, had very flat mm. surfaces. And immediately after that, we entered in, and that scared me. I said, oh, I think we're going into some place we're not supposed mm -hmm. to go. And, uh, or maybe we are supposed to go, but it's still scary, even scarier. And then immediately we start looking up this huge cliff, this tower, this wall right in front of us that just had so much life covering that cliff. Yeah. And I thought I was being transported into a different realm and dimension, which we are. Here in Papahanaumokuakea in the deep ocean, Kaiuli, um, realm of Kanaloa, the Hawaiian Akua, a deity of the ocean, and uh, observed throughout the Pacific as um, goes by Tongaro and also uh, a couple of other derivations of that. But yeah, that was a moment where I, my heart was, I don't know, just exploding, and and I wasn't sure what was going to happen, and it was ended up just being a tremendous gift. But uh, I've been having dreams about that, yeah. about mm -hmm. that moment. That so. uh, calmer basalt can sometimes get in a spiral pattern yeah. with a hole, and it's like, yeah, that can look like a. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it really does, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, that was incredible. Some online viewers remembering that have joined us back on unnamed Seamount 17. I'm just thinking that is must be gifted with the most beautiful name uh, when it receives its name, because 
That uh, absolutely blew my mind. I know yeah. many others as oh, well. Oh, there's another, this is one. another one of those. Yeah, it looks like it's hanging down. So we're in a good position if that's... Uh, <laughs> Where is it coming from? I don't know, back up part of it's on the overhang or something. <laughs> is, is this like the biologist equivalent of an anglerfish? Wait, is it just free-floating? It is free-floating. No. Is it? Yeah. a gift? I think it's an anchor at the bottom. Where is I think it? It's is the base anchor. down it's below? There? Yeah. Oh, it's right oh, behind yeah, there's it. Oh, yeah, there's the whole fast. Oh, my gosh. Sneaky. Very sneaky. Anybody else? Most interesting thing? What's uh, what stands out to uh, front row? We love hearing from you all. What? They're so busy, always working. Yeah, I think well, yeah. We're setting up on this. Let them concentrate on this. I agree with over. you, Dan. I think that was probably one of the most like profound moments of being on board, and I think it was just a good closure to the marine archaeological dives that we were doing yeah, for the past so we can't days, auto because uh, we don't have good Doppler fixes. So right on yeah. the... You have to live fly it. If we're thinking about sampling. Yeah, so that combination just sounds like it would be pretty uh, difficult to make sure that we only get a small portion of the sample. Yeah, it might. Okay. But if he, can, if he can try and get in a stable position, it looks like he's close maybe I, I don't know I'm trying not try not to like lose it because <laughs> if I push him too forward I can I yeah. think I could grab that ledge but it's just if I push him too forward forward it might mm -hmm. just yeah see yeah yeah I, I can't do that without ripping it off probably all right I can come down some if you get maybe you could get an extreme angle on it and just get the corner in uh, maybe I'm gonna go here to the right. I think I see a ledge I could kind of maybe hang off of. Burlington Edison High School, Oceans and Technology class, you are getting a treat. This is a kind of demonstration you don't see every day in, in regards to ocean and technology. Really. You know they could sign up for a ship to shore if they haven't already. Yeah, oh, we'd yeah. love to talk with you all. Yes, get our please. ROV crew and pilots on there. You can go online, nautiluslive.org backslash education. Mm. Sign up for a ship to shore, interaction with us. We'd love to talk with you. If I yeah, sit right there, open. then I don't know if I'm able to. So great to hear they have those opportunities from the high school level. I did my undergraduate in, in ocean technology and, um, you know, building little devices that can go and do research in the water. And Maybe right there on that ledge right there. See it? Super fun. There That's you go. On the porch. It's the best kind of fun when it's challenging too. And mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe, maybe. maybe. I love that. Yeah, amazing opportunity in high school. Take it. I'm glad you all are taking advantage of that. Mm -hmm. so can I see it? I can see. We the need more future ocean technologists. Yeah. yeah. Not enough high schools offer, you know, like a really solid, you know, ocean nope. tech or uh, earth science sort of option in their curriculum. Yeah. All good. I'd love to see more of that. Teachers, Mr. Dan Boudreau and. And uh, you got a great first name. We can um, <laughs> see if we can't find another one as well. Okay. We have yeah. seen two already, so that's a pretty good sign. Yeah. Yeah. I, I understand that this is probably some of the more complicated um, setup. I'm wondering, mm -hmm. like, what? just looking at the sonar and, like, where we are on the map, if we want to climb and try and get on top of the ridge, maybe? That would be easier. Because it's like we're hugging the side of it, it seems. Yeah, and if we want to hit waypoint four, we probably want to move up, up section a little it bit. It is. I think it starts going up right there, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, it we're heading that way. We just, like, we're going along the ridge rather than on top. You know? Yeah. So, so yeah. You, do you guys want to try and climb up a bit? Sure. Let's summit this bad boy. Come on. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> see what it looks are, like. Are we just staying out of the current for now? Mm. No, it's just the, the bearing we're on is taking us away from the... Ah, okay. The ridge is if just you, If you follow the map bit. exactly, it's not going to yeah. always pan out. Yeah, so. we got a little bit of a an offset in our information. Well, I think it just undulates in and out yeah. more than yeah. it's indicated on the map. So if you just go by the map, kind yeah. of a straight line that it's drawing. 
is yeah, not, but it's not indicative it's of what's really happening. Right. <clears throat> it's jutted out yeah, so I mean, much. it's a sheer wall, so. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. You know, if your resolution's like 100 meters or whatever, then. Yeah, you know. you're not going to see this. <laughs> Yeah, and that, that's exactly the problem. You know, one of the problems we still have with uh, some of our deep sea mapping capabilities is, uh, yeah, we can't pick out these these finer features. features. Too mm -hmm. far from you. Well, that's partly why we come down. Yeah, well, absolutely. Come down and see what they look like, and uh, and get a get a visual and and understand how our is how our right sonar capabilities lot? match up with uh, reality yeah, I down. I think I think you need to more fly the feature than to fly the map. Uh, yeah, I would say. I can't tell if that's one of the ones right there on the rock, right on the bottom. Uh, oh my god. Maybe. I'm um, having a hard time. Can you see it a little bit? But yeah. I can try to go down there. Is that what you're looking at? Yeah. Maybe. Uh, it doesn't look like one of those really long ones. Yeah, it doesn't. something down there though maybe but no that 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 is actually something different but yeah. good eye and thank you for looking out for that yeah okay um, but yeah of course i mean you know of course seeing as it's somewhere that you could actually get a sample i think it's uh, not what we're <laughs> looking for <laughs> yeah. no, i know i tried obviously <laughs> no, hey, <laughs> much, much appreciated eye, much appreciated yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. oh. onward these are looking like pretty well-developed manganese crusts here, potentially pretty thick. So interesting. it's always an interesting sign for us. Is that different than what we've been seeing elsewhere? Uh, yeah, it looked it, like I, I could see some of the uh, rock edges a little more clearly uh, through the crust in some other spots. But here it looks like we have some patches where uh, we have some uh, uh, pretty big nobbles on that uh, botryoidal texture. Mm -hmm. Is botryoidal texture often from manganese crust, or is that just a description that can pertain to crusts as well as just the rocks themselves? Um, it's it's a it's a specific morphology, mm -hmm. um, so you you see it with a number of minerals too. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> Atlanta forward a little. I'm gonna just <coughs> bring often her stuff that precipitates way. out okay. of things. So one of the rocks we brought on board last night, 37 pounds. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. was, that, was that the one that <laughs> Rob shoved in there? <laughs> Uh, no, that was no. the previous dive. That was the previous dive? <laughs> oh, that was the previous dive. Okay, you're right. Yeah, that that one we did have to pull out with a crowbar, I and know. it took a couple minutes. We saw uh, <laughs> Jacob Bonnie's in there. Yeah. <laughs> we discussed that when we took it. Yeah, we did. <laughs> it, it was it was very entertaining. Mm -hmm. You mean by discuss we watched you hammered into the <laughs> box? Yeah, that's right. You said you yeah. might need a crowbar to get it out. Yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, for anyone unaware, okay. the uh, sam where we place the samples, because I'm not sure if that gets viewed, is that's capable yeah. of viewing that. Where we place the samples is divided into boxes so that we can separate these rock, these things that look very similar, like rocks, but also separate corals from getting, you know, um, impacted by some of our other samples or rocks and rocks. Um, <laughs> and uh, but uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on who you are, some of the rocks that we pick up are quite large and just barely fit into th one of these boxes. Um, and so the other night we had one that um, was actually maybe a touch larger than the box and we had to do some quick Punching. manipulation and uh, <laughs> kind of hammer it in yeah. <laughs> and yeah, then crowbar literally. it out. <laughs> so. It's a nice rock though. I haven't had a chance to cut it open yet. Uh, I just ran out of time the other day when uh, we were still transiting. Mm. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, Will it be rock o'clock later today? Uh, if there's time, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we're supposed to be back on deck around 4, right? A.M.? Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, I believe it's 24 hours, so yes. I'm not Wait. I'm not cutting rock so it's still dark out or when I'm sleeping. Yeah, expected dive duration of 24 hours. Oh, are you not able to cut the rocks when um, there's a dive? I Oh, it's, this it's is different. Can we zoom, zoom on that? Okay. Uh, Thank it's you. it's it's just safety. Um, yeah. I, I don't sense. like cutting after dark when uh, you know uh, lighting's a little different and uh, uh, you know there are fewer fewer people around to just uh, kind of keep an eye on things while we're working. Oh no, um, I meant like. Uh, and when the dive's down. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I just I just stay off the work sure duck is. as much as possible because you know, it keeps you out of the way of the cable. Can I get a zoom uh, right here, Amber? I can't get too much further than this because I got an overhanger right there in front of me. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I just saw that. I was like, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's why Herc's oh, got that fantastic. bumper bar up on its forehead. Hey, look, at least I'm hanging onto it right now. Oh, oh well, it's yeah, got well, a bumper that's bar? actually, yeah, it's actually fantastic. a feature that you can what? use that bumper bar on the forehead to drive it against the wall. <laughs> oh, let me let me let me get in here. Was that a right. new a new addition on the new frame? Robert? No, this one's not as good at bumper bar on the forehead as the old one. Really, <laughs> I feel like we, after we living on the. We keep adding more stuff to the vehicle. You know, more <laughs> lights and more cameras and more everything. <laughs> might get blown around a little bit, but we'll see. Awesome. Uh, after three weeks on the Nautilus, I need a bumper bar on my forehead. <laughs> yeah, you do, actually. And unfortunately, some of these uh, vessels are, the ceilings are a little bit short for Dan. Not Dan-sized. Yeah. <laughs> no. It's so funny, Canela Lyman would always joke that he wants to wear a helmet around the canoe, just because he always hits his head. Oh it's my true. Oh, gosh. It's true. Yeah. yeah. So. Awesome. Oh, my home planet is three times the size of Earth. So <laughs> I'm actually I'm actually quite small on my home planet. <laughs> awesome. Such an interesting. <coughs> yeah, that 37 pounder. Um, at first, it didn't look like it was something we were going to be able to uh, put on the saw in any any safe way. Uh, but uh, it's this beautiful piece of a pillow basalt, and uh, found a crack in it, and uh, was able to chisel part of it open last night after getting the initial dimensions in uh, photo. And uh, that's a great zoom. Thank uh, you. Popped it open, and. The cracks were extensive enough inside, just from uh, the cooling joints. They actually pulled and pulled themselves enough apart that uh, there were cracks in the rock. Uh, uh, yeah, it's it's it, all of its internal surfaces that have uh, like the joints that uh, cracked open and left a gap, are just filled with um, calcareous ooze. Oh, yeah. Ooh. What is calcareous yeah, ooze? Is that kind um, of interests me. <laughs> it's, it, it's 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 another term for uh, the sediments that we're seeing in some of the recesses of these rocks right here. It's often very uh, carbonate rich and uh, it's it's full of so bacteria and, and ah. polythurian poo and it's it's just very fine grained and it can smell a little weird sometimes and uh, say, it gets everywhere. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, we got an urchin. Oh yeah. They do just tend to blend in there. I love that purple. Ooh, current. Part mountain goat too. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, like how did it get there? Are, are its legs like sticky? Can it adhere to things? 
I don't know about sticky. I know that they're able to just, I mean, they're they're very small and they just kind of, um, just sort of like, um, I think I, I would imagine feet, that, yeah, they're two feet, sort of like sea stars. So yeah. I can chime yeah, in about that. I can chime in about um, the hydrovascular sticky. system that allows them to draw in water, in this case, suction out water, so like push water out, so mm -hmm. they can like. What yeah. were you saying, Zach? Um, what was that? What was that they could? So I can chime in about them being sticky. So I do have oh, a, I have a, a tuxedo urchin. I forgot the scientific name. I, I, I usually <laughs> don't remember the scientific names. But anyways, um, yeah, they are actually kind of sticky. They, they kind of like, whenever they get a hold of you, they kind of like do adhere to your skin or sort of like glass or whatever. So like they, it's sticky-ish, but hmm. it's like they, they have a choice to actually like, you know, adhere from, the, from themselves or from whatever they're sticking to. So oh, that's cool. Yeah. So Hydrovascular. I can't even get near that thing. That and that's hearing. something you should ask Jessica Sandoval about. Yeah, like, she, yeah, she's, I'm sure, studied tube feet <laughs> and hydrovascular <laughs> systems extensively. They're, they yeah. are super fascinating. That's right, Kukwe. There's pumping water through their through their tissues and then pulling re pulling that water out, and they can, it's how they locomote, it's how they hold on to things. Super important in intertidal zones for things yeah. like sea stars and urchins, all the echinoderms. Yeah. Yeah, that, that would be a good little, if we had a little uh, urchin tube foot inspired suction device for sampling. We could All call right, it Jessica, I'm going to send you an email. Sticky foot. <laughs> sticky foot. Well, it goes along yeah. nicely with the slurp. I'm just imagining, I don't know how many Home Alone fans we have, but uh, yes. if you remember in the original Home Alone, they were the wet bandits. Mm -hmm. And then in the Home Alone 2, they were uh, the sticky bandits. And Marv <laughs> used to go around and put his uh, sticky glove into the change pots in New York City and steal people's change. I don't know why I remember this. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> home, alone. home Alone. Oh, another classic. black coral coming up. That's the same one, I think. Oh, same one? <laughs> <laughs> well, I finally got Atlanta caught, caught up, so I'm making my way back over there. Okay. I love the heart. I love the heart that Herc is making on this. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Herc. So sweet, huh? Aww. So sweet. Herc heart. Her cart, that's the caption <laughs> from the SCF computer. This is just such an amazing rock wall. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you were saying earlier that you thought some of the rocks we were seeing were layers of um, um, lava? Yeah, uh, so it looked like we were going through um, a sequence of lava flows, possibly uh, sheet flows uh, for a while, because uh, we just saw stacks on stacks of uh, 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 linear uh, uh, linear features in the wall, and uh, uh, we can see some pillows in there too. That's where you get those uh, those joint sets that form those uh, circular or oval shapes, uh, and uh, they have those cooling joints that go in toward the uh, the inside of that structure. So um, yeah, that looks like part of a volcanic sequence that just kind of got cross-sectioned by uh, formation of this canyon. Occasionally you see uh, uh, another one of those uh, uh, nearly linear features that's kind of cutting across that stack of uh, lava flows at a different angle. And those would be dikes that are intruding into that. So those, mm -hmm. those dikes are uh, coming in a little bit later, but obviously still while the uh, volcano was still active. Interesting. It's a little harder to see what exactly is going on in uh, uh, this area because things are a little bit more jumbled up and uh, we can't see all of the features uh, in part because of uh, uh, the manganese encrustation, but uh, uh, we're still probably looking at uh, part of that uh, complex uh, uh, 
a stack of lavas that have uh, built up this volcano over time. Great. It looks like a lot of, uh, probably a, a lot of pillow basalts, but um, yeah, I've been looking for a little bit more structural information and it's just covered. Yeah. It's there, we just can't see it. Yeah, covered by both the manganese crust as well as some of the sediment. Yeah, yeah. Just make it yeah, you, you see a lot of uh, uh, bulbous uh, kind of features. Um, yeah, that's that's a good indicator of uh, uh, pillow basalt uh, piling up on itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now that's what we saw kind of broken up the other day, and on the inside there were these sort of fracture lines where mm -hmm. it had cooled differently. Um, it's it's a, a like a, a cooling gradient. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, when you, when you cool a lava, uh, and it's particularly striking with uh, the pillow basalts, they quench on the outside because uh, it's, it's that uh, outer part of the lava flow that contacts this water, which is uh, just a degree or two uh, above freezing. Right. So it, it quenches really quickly, it cools, it forms this glassy rind because mm -hmm. it, it cools so fast, none of it can crystallize. And then the interior is still warm, and uh, you, that can stay molten for a little while if uh, they're still actively... Uh, 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 lava like moving through the interior of that rind. So. Can we get a look at this one? Yep, that's Thank what you. I was saying. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah so there's, there's still lava that's coming through there, so it's it's kind of going through this this tube of uh, uh, a frozen glassy uh, 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 lava in these pillow flows. It, it'll keep going until it, it kind of runs out of steam, you know, just no more lava to erupt, but uh, it'll, it'll freeze um, at the toe of the lava flow, and then eventually the, the pressure the internal pressure of the lava gets too high and it'll bust open at the end of that toe, break out, and it'll form uh, another pillow that quickly freezes, stalls, pressure builds up, it busts open, you get another one. So that's that's how they propagate uh, down and, you know, they, they form those bulbous structures so. that we call uh, uh, pillows. Make sure it's holding on before we do anything. Uh, it'd be great to get a zoom on it first. We've got, I think there might be two corals here. Can I get a zoom, Amber? directly next to each other so yeah because i got a hold on the ledge right here if it is yeah i don't think it is it though um, i think there, there's two different corals yeah there's yeah. two yeah, different corals different. this one there's, we've yeah. got one coral in the background and then that look actually might be a bamboo and then we've got one coral that's a little bit shorter than the others that we were seeing yeah. um is that the one right behind it no the, the one in front of it actually is this the yeah, long skinny yeah. one that's looks a, very similar to one. what we saw. Yeah, the, the one behind it is bamboo. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, this, this long skinny one, I think it could potentially be the same, but it's uh, not quite as long as we were seeing previously. So uh, not sure if it's still of interest, um, but it does have a similar branching structure. So uh, Aren't the other ones like a little bit more red-ish? I have a red hue to them, I mm, think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, that might be the light, though, because here yeah. you have a bunch of sediment You've got about the sand behind it, it. Yeah. yeah. You'll have a different, um, the iris and, and color will be different because of that. Um, yeah, I'm not hearing from... Okay. okay. Chris Kelly joining us. Howdy, Chris. Um, he's uh, helping us out a little bit here. Yeah. So, um, what do I think? This this one is this one is much shorter than the other ones that we were seeing earlier today. Right. Yeah. The branching pattern's similar, right? Um, I don't have a direct comparison in front of me. It does look similar, but it could. It, I mean, the other thing is this could be just. You know, a crescent gorget that kind of got snipped at some point by, you know, something falling or, or anything else. Um. Um, so yeah, we're just having a having a conversation with the researchers on shore who. Uh, are such a useful uh, tool who knows so much about these and um, utilize some of the samples that we collect. Um, so, yeah, they uh, they are thinking that this might be might be the same, very similar branching structure as what we saw previously. Yeah, possibly. Um, but we are not.
positive. Um, mm -hmm. How are we doing uh, front row tether and tether wise and everything? We're good. Okay. Yeah, when we had a little move on, so. Yeah, I just got him to hold it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's possible it that we're going to run out of tether, but maybe mm -hmm. not. But um, it sort of depends on how long we hang here. Yeah. Do you want to go for it? Uh, I'm waiting for confirmation from the scientists ashore that they do want. Um, I, I have specifically asked them. Okay. Uh, they might be checking with Tina. Yeah, to see um, because. Get ready. Yeah, because the other issue too is if this is the only, if this is a different species, then, then the, this is the only one that we've seen of this one yeah. as well. Um, that, that's okay. Uh, we're we're uh, permitted to sample. Um, we just can't take another unless we see uh, 10 of the same, if I remember correctly. Okay. Uh, this would be a snip and slurp? Yes, this would yeah. be a snip and slurp, and we have a, we have a let's sample. Yes. Yep. Chris Green lights this. Great. And this is going to be a, f this will be a very f floaty <coughs> um, snip. Um, it would be great to get a small portion with branch that has branches on it. Um, uh, yeah, Asako agrees too. So, all right. Good. And then we need, what jar are we going to do on? Um, all jars are Thank open, you. so it's all up to you. You want to go to Herc Hydraulics? Yep, and then uh, rotate jar. Where is it at? Right here. Yeah, or I'll just do. And Amber, can you zoom in? Yeah. Way in. Yeah. Thank you, little thing. We uh, pan down just a little bit so I can see it. Pushing it out. Can you flip? Maybe. I'll be able to see what you're doing. Is it? Wow, <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> nice catch. Wow. Wow. And he didn't even do that with eyes on it. <laughs> it was incredibly <laughs> impressive. Insane. Thank you. That was with oh the Oh my gosh, that was amazing. As we like to say. That was just in the gut as Aquaman. Okay. Can we zoom more in on that? Like way in? Let me, oh, yeah. let me retract it down. Maybe I'll be able to get it. Yeah, move the camera back. Yeah, there you go. That's good. Okay. What was it again? I think it's number four. It says slurp on it. Suction, is it starboard suction? suction? There we go. Um, do you want to do 10 or 5? Uh, you can start with 10. We'll just get it in the hole and then you can drop it down. Wait, by 10? What do you mean 10? We want oh, 
We want to bump it a few times, 10%. Like, jack it up to 50. Okay. Are we seeing it going? Uh, I don't see any movement in the water. No. Give it more. It's not even going. Hold on a second, let me do it on yours, maybe. As with all our samples, so grateful. Uh, uh, no, we want plus. Oh, oh plus, 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 plus. Plus. But yeah, my bad. Grateful for the opportunity to learn more. Very much These so. Beautiful curl corals. Can you try and get more in view there? Oh, I see something happening now. There we go. Oh yeah, there it goes. Yeah, and these these delicate corals can be a very difficult collection sometimes. Well, like right. Cal, nice. There you go. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so you can uh, drop that down. Yeah, leave it, uh, but don't drop it all the way down. Just drop it to like twenty or something to see if we can get it up in there. I think I saw it floating in there. Already? Yeah. Do we then see it? Turn it off and see if it falls. Are you were sure it went. You you mean you saw it go in the jar? Yeah. Can you turn it off then and see if it falls to the bottom of the jar? Yep. Maybe not. How, how certain are we it went in the jar? I don't, I didn't I see it go in. I haven't seen it in the jar yet, but I okay. well, might I not have been I wasn't watching looking, it. so. Okay, so cycle it a couple times. Just, just bring it up and then take it right back oh, off. Oh, there it is. Okay. Ah, okay. Right. fantastic. Take it off, take it off, take it off. Awesome, thank you so much. Okay. Well done, thank you. Nav mm -hmm. confirming that was sample 083, right? Yes. Awesome, thank you. Thanks. Yes, and our scientists at shore are um, thanking the pilots for the valuable and important collection, so. Yeah, there will. I think this is going to be a very interesting sample that will be used by multiple labs. Sounds so. like it. Yeah, awesome. very exciting. And an online viewer says it's so good to see Robert. He's my favorite. Been watching for since since 2019. Since 2014. Oh, 2014. <laughs> That's not as bad as the. What was that other one? 94. <laughs> wow. <laughs> It's Tuesday. Well done, Zach. Well done, Robert. <laughs> it is actually Tuesday. It is actually Tuesday. We should have ice cream Tuesdays as well. <laughs> that lychee ice cream on Sunday oh, was that really was good. good. It was. I saved Oreos from a snack night like oh, two days before. Oreos and lychee. With oh, the wow. strategy in mind that I was gonna like have it with my vanilla gelato, and then they whipped out a five-gallon container of cookies and cream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, oh. They just felt so you. Good. Good, they did. Good minds yeah. think alike. I had root beer floats. Oh, Ooh, that was so what? good. Oh. Yeah, I have a stash of root beers in our room. So. Yeah, I, so noticed you were, yeah. <laughs> I noticed you were you're busting out the, the root beer every now and again. Yeah. Dang it. it has, yeah, uh, <laughs> we can tell it's about lunchtime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I live down the street from the port. I could have brought whatever I wanted. I didn't bring any of this good stuff. Well, and Costco was right there. I if know. I knew that we had like that wiggle room, like that time after settling <laughs> yeah. in, then I would have just like walked across the street and mm -hmm. hit up Shucks. Costco with all kinds of munchies. They had a H-mark too. It's okay, it's probably too. best. <laughs> yeah. You well, you've been in the gym every day. I haven't been oh. once. This is a, uh, it's a good thing I didn't go get a bunch of snacks. <laughs> <laughs> so, so my mom messaged at the beginning of our watch today. She's like, I can always tell when a watch change is about to happen because food. Uh, <laughs> food. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we start talking about yeah. food. <laughs> Ooh, this is an interesting one. If it's possible to zoom in on this. Oh, nice. Beautiful. Oh, that's pretty. Mm -hmm. It's one of the candelabras. But it has a real name, but... They call that. Yeah, that's the bamboo. Yeah, uh, I think so. 
bamboo All fan. Right. Can I go zoom, Amber? Oh, oh yeah, the there's a tiny too. one too. That one could be a primnoid. There's the, these sorts of candelabra shapes are not uncommon. Beautiful. Wow, that is stunning. Mm -hmm. Tiny little associate here and there, a few of them. Mm -hmm. Here they come. Yeah. <laughs> it's like right we're signing out. <laughs> Yeah, Another okay. Dan in the house. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Well, 12 to 4 watch is starting to trickle in to relieve us. So mm -hmm. we'll slowly start uh, disappearing to be yeah. replaced by other voices. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is the That's same fantastic. bamboo, the I-4 cl class, that, uh, according to Chris Kelly. Mm -hmm. We saw one of those yeah. on a recent dive as well. Ready? Good. Yep. I'm back up on the wall real quick. Fantastic, yeah. So it's been great to travel with this, uh, you know, seamount with y'all um, and y'all at at home. So, so yeah, we will uh, go get some lunch. <coughs> go get some lunch. Yes, lunch time. Nearly made it to waypoint four. Just cliffhanging right here on the edge mm -hmm. of the cliff yeah. as we hand over to the new team. Almost at waypoint four, a few tens of meters down from it. Yeah. So. Not bad. Yeah. Not too bad. Made some good great. progress on this dive. Oh, yeah. We've seen some interesting things. <laughs> definitely, yeah, yeah. Definitely. I, yeah, those um, zoanthids over over top the paragorches and... Uh, you know, these different bamboos and This almost forces. remind me of how, like, people graft uh, fruit trees mm -hmm. in some ways. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I bet it is kind of similar. Can't help but wonder, yeah. Mm -hmm. Morning. Uh, Hans has just showed up. He's my... Uh, Someone who uh, takes over my chair uh, for the next four hours. So, uh, we that will see you again. That is the Hans von Tilburg, yes. star of Drain the Oceans yeah. on Disney Plus <laughs> Nat Geo. Yes, yeah, so you'll uh, hear from us again at uh, 8 p.m. tonight, Honolulu time. That's right. Take care. That's right. my friends uh, excited to see you all in eight hours I uh, hope you stay tuned enjoy and um, it's been a pleasure just giving love to brothers and sisters coming in to the house to the control van to the Holly and uh, saying aloha and a hui ho to all of you Malamo Pono Daniel Kinzer signing off
Can you move the ship 10 meters west, please? Did you change your heading? Huh? Did you change it or am I pulling you? Yeah, leave it. Uh, yeah. I'm using that right now. See where I am? So, you leave it westerly. Well, I'm probably going to be pulling you. We got to wait for the ship. <coughs> nope. I'm going to pull you a little bit here. So what's happening, what's happening right here, right now, we're on a, uh, we're on a wall. And as I've come up, the wall's come away from us, but we haven't moved the ship yet. <coughs> so we're on par. So our maximum, you know, we're basically tail to tail like we launch. I can come back down until the ship moves. turn and go up the ridge. Where are we in the big picture there? Yeah, we'll go up to the top of the ridge. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go find the top of the ridge and then we'll move to the <coughs> whichever way it goes. We can, <coughs> it's easier to skirt the ridge if uh, Atlanta's up on top of it, because then if Adal <coughs> Atlanta, excuse me, if Atlanta goes for a holiday, it doesn't go into the wall. <coughs> All right, front row, we're still getting settled in, so we'll stand by. I got the update from Val, so whenever you're ready. Roger, we're ready. All right, I'm sure it's the same thing you heard that um, the I map know, doesn't always follow the route, but we'll be moving to the vicinity of the waypoints, moving up to five and beyond, and wanting to get on back on track at the top of the ridge, which seemed to be the most interesting. Always is. The. Uh, Not always, but <laughs> usually, usually. Yeah, the, the forenoon watch has have taken a recent rock sample, so we're good there for a while. They took a Niskin sample at a biological concentration Turn your while ago. Enough. And so we're good for rocks, and we'll get back on the ridge and stay on track to waypoint five and beyond. We are um, currently moving the boat towards the uh, Roger towards the ridge there. I'm trying to stab the DSC with a rock. It's hard because I'm pulling on the tether, so it should uh, actually be touching the uh, bumper bars, not the port, so the other technique. Well, I can't turn my heading at all because my heading is dictated by, uh, yeah, Argus tail-to-tail -tail action. Definitely tail-to-tail. -tail. Oh. Ten meters might not have been enough, but we'll find out here. What about, I don't care what the boat's doing, what about Atlanta? What about Atlanta? Well, I care what the boat's doing, but let me rephrase that. <laughs> R 
Roger, the boat has com has completed the move. How about Atalanta? No, can't do it. Can you do it? You got the leash? How come you're 13 meters above me and we were on par? Uh, yeah, you can spin around now. I don't know. It's all right, did, front which row. Which way did you spin? Zoom in there. Right Full zoom. <laughs> I don't know if you'll be able to focus. Yeah, it's not gonna. Hmm. I think that's actually really cool. Uh, don't try too hard to spin. Yeah, if your thrusters are banging, you'll pull me off the cliff there. You see the vehicle start moving. Uh, yeah. Come down, come down there. And come down this little. All right, front row, this back row, we're locked and loaded, and we'll just wait for the ship move and standing by. Wait for the Atalanta move. Ship move's complete. Yeah, uh, wait for the Atlanta move, and then At we'll stand Atalanta. by. Atalanta. 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 Huntress. Hmm. Hunting, hunting Hercules. Sneaking up on it all the time. In the uh, in Nautilus mythology, <laughs> always sneaking up on me, <laughs> trying to pounce, always running away. Okay, Atlanta is now uh, yeah twenty twenty thirty meters from the wall. Um. I'm good for another 10. Yes, please. How, how brave do you feel? How brave does Mia feel? What's the closest you ever been to the wall with Atalanta? Yeah? If you're touching, you're too close. Kip, uh, on this one. I don't know where your orange one is. Okay, you can uh, go wide there. Chasing me up, yeah. Mm. Yeah. If there was uh, more current, the tether would be blowing off to one side or the other. <laughs> it's good. It should be appreciated. What'd you say, Hans? That was Jacob. It was Jake. Popping off. <laughs> and what what did your research? What what did you learn? <laughs> 